Spring is all about butterflies, birds, and blooms. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be a book organizer box. We're going to use essential stencils transfers here. Beautiful. These are some birds. I'll have it linked below if you're interested. I have this little box and I got it from Dirt Cheap, but you can see here that it is from, I believe, Target. I got these very, very cheap. I think they were like 50 cents a piece, so I got like 12 of them. I left some though. So, we're going to use this little box and this beautiful branch. You saw the little wooden tool I had? It came with the basket making set, but it works really good for burnishing on these stencils. And I love using it for that. Always try around. I've used the, the plastic ones. I've used the wood ones. It just really depends on what type of project that you're doing. And if you have something that's really detailed like this, you might want to use something a little bit smaller so you can really get around the surface better. And I found that when I'm using stencils, uh, I mean these rub-on transfers on wood, using a wood tool seems to make it uh, apply easier. Totally up to you. When it's something that is a very smooth surface, I can use maybe the plastic tools for that and it works just fine. So when you're using transfers like this, rub-on transfers, it's really important that you go around the entire project the whole thing. I've just sped it up a little bit because nobody wants to see me do this all day, right? Not the whole video. And I'm just going to go around every single bit of it. I always try a little bit before I pull the whole thing off to make sure it's sticking down. And you can see here that yes, everything stuck down. So do you think this is like a Japanese magnolia here? Or I pro I'm probably saying that wrong. Like a Japanese magnolia or a cherry blossoms? They're really gorgeous, and I think for spring, they're absolutely perfect. All right, y'all know I love my little birds, too. The set was perfect for me. It's like they designed it for me, really. I'm going to just place down this particular little bird, put it down there, and hold it in place. Always hold your rub-on transfer, um, the little paper that it's stuck to, or that little clear surface that it is stuck to. Try to hold on to that until you get your project pushed all the way down, you know, burnished in there really, really well. Lift up just a little. I love it when it turns out like that. But just a little bit, and if you have any problems, you just lay it back down and go back over it. So continuing with this theme, I am going to add another little bird over here. And I cut out the parts where I like tested where I wanted to put the birds. I like moved them around, tried to see which birds because there are a bunch in a bunch of different styles of birds and they're in different positions. So I wanted it where it made sense, like where their feet are, their little, you see it actually looks like they're standing on the branch. It just blends in beautifully together. And I'm just going over it with my paper. You know, you're supposed to do this part too, making sure everything's nice and flat. Then I'm gonna add a little bit more on here. And I love that they come in different pieces. They could be used separate or you can build and put them together. I really like doing this. It uh, makes something really unique and special so you don't have the same thing everybody else has. So maybe a hundred people were to order this page. You can still take those hundred people and they can make these totally different. They could customize them exactly like they want them you know, just like they want it. You could leave that branch just like that, or you could add to it. And you'll see more of that uh, in a little bit. I'll be adding some more stuff and layering some more stuff. I think these are perfect for spring. For me, you know, the signs of spring in nature are very exciting. Now, fall is my favorite season, as most of you will know if you follow me very long. However, in the springtime, since you know, I live here in the country. I can see all the changes in the trees and the, uh, we have a wisteria, like a little bush outside and, and watching all the stages of that, our blueberry tree, when it starts to flower. Um, I need to show you all that when it happens this year. It's just absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. And watching that, my peach tree, watching all those things bloom, it's just very exciting. 
It's very pretty. All the birds are going, just singing all kinds of songs. Just sit on the porch and listen to that. It's so peaceful. And those are the things I love about spring. This is just precious to me. That's so precious. So I thought it would be a cool idea to put this on the inside. This little branch doesn't have any flowers on it, right? No flowers on it. But I thought I would put it right here on the inside of the box. Now this part of it is painted white and that's the way that the box came. I didn't do anything special. So I'm just gonna position it, kind of press it down. It has a little bit of stickiness so that it will cling slightly to your surface. And I just like to kind of uh, use that and push down a little bit and hold it in place. And then, you know, get in there with that tool and go over all the details of this tree branch and this beautiful little bird. And so far, we've got three different birds on here. It's so cute. They did an absolute fantastic job on these stencils. That is gorgeous. It just peels off so nicely. You know, not every project we do has to be complicated. And although I'm taking my time to really show you how to stretch these rub-on transfers, how to really build them and, and make something your own, um, there, they just just doesn't take a whole lot of time to do it, you know, other than deciding where you want your pieces to go. And then the rest of it goes pretty smoothly. You know, if you're a beginner crafter, this might be the perfect way for you to build your confidence. Of course, if you don't find boxes like this, it's not a big deal. You can get any type of a box, a wooden box. You can find them at thrift stores, craft stores, uh, what have you. You can find wooden boxes and you could do this on your own. These would be super cute on a painted jewelry box, I think, too. So there's a close-up of these flowers so you can see just how detailed they are. So this little bird, he had legs, but I took his legs off so they would appear as though he was just sitting down in this little group of flowers. So we're going to call this our little Robin Redbreast and put him right there in a nest of flowers. He's happy. He's checking out the signs of spring, too. I want to let y'all know that I have actually recorded my walk around the property. It is going to be, and my children helped me, so you'll see their little hands and things in the, in the video. But it's the video that I'm going to put out that's not typical for my channel, and I would really appreciate it when you see it, if you would watch it. Now, it is going to be labeled something to the effect of Goblin Core with question marks because it's a new core, like cottage core, that I have found. It's an aesthetic that is really interesting, and surprisingly enough, the characteristics are very similar to the wooden type, uh, I mean the woodland type decor that I like. And when we walk around our property and we look at mushrooms and we look at funguses and we look at algae and, and trees that are broken down and pieces of wood that fall that I use to do my crafting, it just seems so, it just calls to me. It really does. So it's got a weird label. It's going to have kind of a funky thumbnail. Um, uh, kind of an imaginative thumbnail, but I would love it if you could watch it when it comes out because it is a tour of my property, but you just won't know that that's necessarily what it is. It's kind of a tour of nature. I'll put it that way. Okay, so you see this is another branch that doesn't have much going on. Maybe it's just going to start blooming soon. And so I'm going to add this bird on here. But you see how on his belly you can see the branch through it? See right there? I am going to disguise that by adding a bloom to the tree. So I'm going to put it on an existing little nub where a branch would be coming out. I'm going to go right over the top of it. See, I'm going along with the contours that are already there to make it look as though it was meant to be this way. So now it just looks a little more 3D, right? It looks like the bird is kind of on the branch behind the flowers. We're going to add a little more up here. This is close for you so you can see just how much time I take to get the right position, hold it in place, and then give that a good burnishing. Just really go over it. 
if y'all don't have tools like this, it's not a big deal. Grab a little wooden popsicle stick. That'll work fine. See, this is why we pull them up easily, very slowly, so we can fix all the little edges. I don't want it to look sloppy. We want this to look high quality. So, we've got our blossoms here. We've got our birds here. Let's add those butterflies. These are beautiful. These came from another sheet of rub-on transfers. And I am just going to borrow some of those from that sheet. Just show you how you can mix it up. And I'm going to add some little butterflies just here and there. I'm not going to, you know, go nuts with it. But look at that little blue butterfly. And I'm going to take this little yellow butterfly. And this one looks like he's sitting or standing on a branch the way he's positioned with his wings up. So I thought, well, let's put him on a branch. It almost looks like the little bird who's sharing the space with him is checking him out. All right, now we've got the little yellow butterfly on there. It looks like a little wren up there on that branch on the inside, doesn't it? I love that. So pretty. House wrens are so cute. They make a mess. Potentially make a big mess, but they are precious. They really are. Okay. So tell me what you think about this box. You could put magazines in here. You could put spring things on here. Heck, you could use this on a coffee bar if you wanted to, to put your, your sugar and creamer bottles. If you have the little jars that are like the little shakers, you could use this for lots of things. The next project is going to be a deco egg decor piece. So you're going to use my podge and a chippy brush, whatever brush you like. I'm going to use some E6000, little piece of scrap foam. This is a plastic egg. I thrifted it. I do not know where it came from. This is from Hobby Lobby, but you can get any stand from Dollar Tree. A variety of flowers, whichever ones are going to match the tissue paper that you choose. So these are Dollar Tree tissue papers that I've collected over the years. And any of these would really be fine for spring, I think. These are my, my spring selections here, and they're already pretty. I like this one a lot, but I did decide to go with this one because I've already done some spring decor in that pattern. So now what I'm doing is just looking at the pattern that's on the paper, looking at flowers that are similar and that the colors that are similar. So here we go. This actually, I think these cream roses will look great. So let's put some Mod Podge on this egg and we'll show you how we're going to apply this paper because we're going to decoupage this. Take your paper and just tear it into shreds. You can also cut it, but it makes a lot more sense just to, for one thing, it's easier and you can have irregular pieces and that is totally fine. You're going to be patching it all over the egg. So just be very careful when you put it down, don't try to move it. Don't try to slide it because it can, it can tear. Tissue paper is very thin and Mod Podge is going to get it wet, so it's going to be even more fragile. Take your brush and just go over your edges. This is how I do it. Now, if you want to just put them down and then put your, put the glue down and then put your paper down and then do the entire egg, you can do it like that. But I just decided that as I was going, I would just keep the Mod Podge going. So I would add a layer of Mod Podge on there choose a sheet or a section of paper that I like or that might fit there and just I am gently pressing that this is in some of this is in high speed but believe me I'm very gently pressing that and then add the glue as I go so I'm going over my edges first to make sure everything's nice and, and flat on my edges and then you can go um, around the middle parts and cover that all up and you're gonna do that all the way around the egg until you have it completely covered with the paper. And it does take a little time to, uh, to dry. So you can sit it in front of a fan if you want to. And if you have time, just let it dry overnight. You know, I don't think it would take the whole day to dry, but certainly you can wait and do it um, the next day. You can move on to something else and work on that while this dries, which is what I usually do. So, now we're going to work on the base. I'm going to take this piece of foam and cut it 
into a section that will fit on this little candle stand or riser, cupcake riser, whatever um, you want to call that. If you notice, I don't necessarily go by the typical names of things. Uh, I just kind of blurt it out and then try to correct myself. Y'all know what I mean, though. Scrambled brains. I know what I want to say, but when it comes out my mouth, sometimes it is so wrong. All right, I'm going to take that E6000 and put a couple of dots on here around the edges. And yes, it is flipped over, and I'm using the underside. The underside has some rough edges, which will make the glue and foam stick together better instead of being all um, glossy. It's kind of hard to glue things to something that's glossy. And I like the shape of this upside down for the contour of this piece. So you'll see what I'm saying. Now I'm going to just pull off some of these and cut off some of these little roses. These are really pretty. I got these at the thrift store. Um, and they're, they're nice quality. These little fern pieces came off of the purple picks that I have been using. See the little purple in the background? These pieces came off of it. But the pieces are too big as it is, so I'm going to cut the lighter and smaller sections off the top. And we're going to use that. And I'll save the bottom pieces for another project. That's a really good way to save your money there. I'm going to take some of this green, and I'm going to paint this piece of foam. I would have used green foam, but I didn't have any, so that's why I painted it. You don't have to do that if you don't want, but it'll help disguise your greenery. So here's the egg once it is dry. And I will tell you that the underneath part of this egg, because I actually put it on the bottom of the egg and I shouldn't have, it's still kind of wet. I'm going to glue it down here. I wanted to get the video done for y'all, so... I didn't let it dry completely. Please let yours dry completely or you're gonna have issues with the egg falling off the foam. I'm gonna add in some hot glue and the other glue, my E6000. You use whatever super glue you wanna use, but it's thick and kinda gel-like, so I like that. And then let that dry, which I did not do, and you will see the problem it causes. Okay, so it's a little wobbly there, right? I'm gonna just hold it in place so I can show you what to do. I'm going to alternate the very pale peach and the darker peach. I'm going to go all the way around the green right in the center, just placing these down. You can glue directly to the foam if you would like to do that, but a lot of time with the foam, the pieces will fall out. So I used the little wire section and just poked it in there and then added some hot glue. So they're kind of chained together, right? Now, I chose this yellow because there's a little yellow in there. In springtime, you know, we got yellow. This actually looks like goldenrod, which we usually see in the fall here, but it's pretty annoying as heck if you have allergies, but it's pretty. Makes a nice little flyaway. Looks like a little something blooming, something new coming to life. Springing forth. Go all the way around and put those on, whatever type you want to use. And then I'm going to add these little pieces of fern. I'm going to have them all going in the same direction. So the bottom will be to the left and they're going to point up toward the right. So this is more of a structured uh, type floral piece, I guess you could say, than I normally do. I normally like kind of a wild cottagey look. But for this particular project, I thought it would be nice to do something a little different because everybody's taste is different. And maybe you prefer this to some of the wilder stuff I do. So I'm giving you some options. Now I've got these little pieces here and they came off some thrifted pieces, but you can use lavender, that would be pretty. And I know Dollar Tree um, has carried lavender in the past or some of those fuzzy looking greenery pieces they had a few years ago. I know my stores still have them. You could cut some pieces of that off and put it in there. That would be really pretty too. I'm just gonna tuck these in here and there and you can see they're kind of in a, it's kind of a pattern, you know, going around the plant or going around the roses there on the bottom of the egg. I'm trying to hold that egg on there. You can see it's kind of floppy sometimes. I'm going to cut off a piece of this beautiful ribbon. It's got the little kind of eyelet look on the edges, the little extra loops of thread. And I'm gonna tie a pretty bow around the base. You don't have to do this part or you could add flowers, whatever you wanna do here. Just gonna trim down that little bow. And then this is how this piece is going to look. You 
can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. free. The next project is a mini cutting board. I'm going to use a sand and block, some scraps of greenery, little pieces, some of that fern, this beautiful piece of rub on transfer from Essential Stencil, and then this little cutting board that I got at the thrift store. You can use one that you get at Dollar Tree, you know, any one that you have. I'm going to go over it because this one's kind of grungy looking. It had some little like oil spots or something on it. It's clean, it's been washed and dried. And since it's fully dry, I'm going to go ahead and sand it. And you're going to sand with the grain. That's always the best practice. Take a wipe and clean it off because you're going to have residue on there. You don't want muddy in your paint. Look at that. That came off of that board. All right, it's nice and dry now. We've allowed it to dry. I'm going to take a wet wipe, a little bit of golden brown paint with a little bit of water and we're going to make sort of a very, very light stain. I just want to give a little life back to the wood since I've sanded it. It's just bamboo. It's not anything, you know, real expensive, but I wanted to make it look a little more expensive, right? So I'm going to dip that damp baby wipe into that little stain that we have just made. And I'm going to go part way down. I went, I used this type of a shape, I guess, or this measurement based on the size of the rub on transfer that I was going to do because I want the top to be like a stain, very pale stain look, and the bottom is going to be white because now we're going to put the rub on transfer on top of paint and see how it does there. I am just going to lay this white on. I did three coats and let it dry, and I did get around the edges of that as well like on the sides of the board, so that it would have a nice continuous look. All right, once it is all dry, I will take that beautiful, beautiful rub on. And this is the part of the, the sheet that I used to do another video where I did my essential stencil video. And I'll, I'll have that for you linked in the description box and as well as, you know, uh, the information on how you can get your hands on these little beauties too. Because I really do love them. I would never share anything with you that I don't love. I honestly would not. If it's something I don't believe in, you're not going to see it on my channel. No. No, sir. And everybody knows that if they send me something to review, they're going to get a 100% honest review. I really care about my subscribers and my viewers. And it matters to me that you are satisfied with this channel, with the things that I tell you, and that you can trust what I tell you. That really matters more than anything else. Okay, now once that's all down, and now you see I've switched over to a little wooden piece just on the little edges. I'm gonna carefully, carefully, because it's just so detailed. I'm gonna slowly pull that up. Any place that raises up, I'll lay it back down and See, just like that little edge, and make sure that it comes out complete. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm not saying my work is beautiful, but what I'm saying is the stencil itself is beautiful. And it fit perfectly in that white painted area. Look at the detail. So I want to add a little wreath to the top just to give it a little something extra. You certainly don't have to do this. I have a couple of tiny little miniature wreaths. And the smallest one is the one I think that we're going to use. This little piece of jute actually came from a hanging sign from Dollar Tree and I saved these things to use them again. So they still have the little plasticky edges which makes it really nice when you're threading it through something like this. I'm going to find where I want to place it and then flip it over. And then we'll just hold it down there with some hot glue. And certainly you could use a staple if you've got a staple gun. You could do that. And then cover it with a piece of white paper and trim it off so that the back is nice and neat. Okay? Now to keep it from moving, I'm just going to add some hot glue on the back of the little wreath form and kind of center it on the little board. Hold it there for a second, let it dry, and this is how it's going to look. Now we're going to make a miniature wreath right on the top. We can do that. 
We can cut our bigger pieces into smaller pieces and use the same type of techniques and methods that we use when we are making a floral wreath. You're just gonna use smaller pieces. I really wanted to use this little piece of fern, only one little piece, right here, going across. And then I'll start adding these little pieces of, I guess they're like little berries. Some of them are green and some of them are purple. No, you know, I don't know if they're berries. These might actually be part of like uh, seed pods. Not sure, but they're really pretty. And they look like little clusters of um, flowers that are about to bloom. Really pretty. I'm going to add these all over this wreath. I'm going to do the sides, the top surface. I'll leave a couple of little spaces on the top open so that I can add these bigger flowers. I'm going to add this little pick came with, uh, it's like a, a dark purple. And so we're going to add one of those. Just cutting it down where it will actually fit. And this is glued sort of toward the top inside. You'll need it to be a little more flat. Um, so you need to trim it down, then go ahead and trim it down. And then it has the lighter purple and the white. And I think they look really cute together. I'm going to add a stem and then we're going to put one of those little pods right on the top of a piece of greenery we've added. We just made our own little plant there. And this is how it will look. I'm going to use just my little heat gun here and this is going to get rid of all those little glue strings. Here's the final result on this one. And here's the good part where we get to see everything that we just made. Here is the egg. If you're enjoying this video and the content that I put out, you can subscribe to my channel for free. And I always appreciate it. Be sure that you leave me some comments down in the comment section. I always respond to everyone. I read every single thing. And I know that these are projects that you can do. I'd love to hear what you would do with these projects. I love the encouragement and support that you guys give me continually. It is constant. The love that I feel when I get in the comment section of my videos is just overwhelming. It really makes my heart just swell with joy and I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for being part of my YouTube journey. It's been very fun. It's been very exciting getting to meet so many people with so many similar thoughts, you know, and so many similar um, interests. That you like my work is the biggest compliment in the entire world. And I put this out there for you and make it budget friendly so that we can all do it. I thank you so very much for stopping by. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.